As SpaceX gears up for the Starship's fifth integrated flight test, the licensing controversy is heating up like never before. As discussed in my previous video, the FAA delayed the flight test license until November, citing concerns over verifying some of the information provided in SpaceX's license application. A primary concern is the water discharged through the deluge system, which, according to reports, may contain pollutants, specifically mercury levels higher than permitted. Despite SpaceX asserting that the water used is potable and independent tests show mercury levels within Environmental Protection Agency limits, the FAA has initiated an investigation into these claims. Additionally, the EPA has proposed a fine of nearly $150,000 against SpaceX for violating the Clean Water Act by discharging pollutants into wetlands surrounding the launch site without the required permits. According to the EPA, they have already sent the company a letter in August 2023 requesting information about the deluge system's operation. Despite this warning, SpaceX reportedly continued using the deluge system for Starship launches and super-heavy static fire testing. The proposed EPA fine follows a $3,750 penalty by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality for the same deluge water discharge issue, indicating increased scrutiny of SpaceX's operational practices at Starbase. Apart from concerns over the deluge water, authorities are also investigating the potential impact of the hot stage ring splashdown on marine life, the effects of sonic booms from returning super-heavy boosters, and the launch operation's impact on local wildlife. While SpaceX claims to have conducted extensive analyses on these matters, provided ample evidence refuting claims, and asserted that they had complied with all regulatory requirements, the FAA remains unconvinced. It is now working with agencies like the National Marine Fisheries Service to conduct further investigations before approving the fifth flight test. Recently, the House Science, Space, and Technology Committee held a hearing focused on encouraging commercial space innovation while maintaining public safety. The session highlighted significant frustrations from both Congress and the commercial space industry over the FAA launch and reentry licensing regulations. They criticized FAA's implementation of Part 450 regulations, which were meant to streamline launch licensing, but instead have led to delays and confusion. Industry representatives argued that the prolonged approval process is hampering innovation in the commercial space sector, potentially impacting crucial projects like NASA's Artemis program and threatening the U.S.'s competitive edge in space exploration. In defense, FAA Associate Administrator Kelvin Coleman acknowledged the issues with Part 450 but attributed many delays to incomplete applications and frequent changes submitted by companies, which require further review. Specifically, he noted that delays in Starship's licensing were primarily due to environmental assessments necessary for new operational changes. We have civilians outperforming the U.S. government. One person in the United States can put more spaceships into the stratosphere than the entire governments of all the world combined. The problem is, when you have different programs, such as SpaceX, ULA, Blue Origin, and others, that have redefined space travel, if we start holding up that process, we lose our edge in this world market that is extremely competitive. Tell me, when we put all these spaceships, more than anybody else in the world, why the same process that we used to approve that, all of a sudden, has something changed? Is there a reason that we're holding up the same process that's already been approved previously? Safety is our focus. That's, that's why we're in business. Let's take uh, Starship. We issued a 450 license to SpaceX for that activity. You ask what changes. Uh, missions change. Technologies on the vehicle change, which require a modification to the license. SpaceX has four flights under its belt three of which have been under modifications to the license that have been requested by the company. It is the company that is pushing mission by mission approvals. So you do realize that technology changes literally every day. This is the leading edge technology in the world. I ask you to streamline your process because I think if you don't, we fall behind and our very way of life is in jeopardy. According to SpaceX, the company has been ready for Starship's fifth flight test since the first week of August, and the ongoing delay is not due to new safety concerns, but rather superfluous environmental analysis. Efforts are reportedly underway to refine the regulatory process and improve the efficiency of license approvals. Hopes are that the investigation and regulatory review will be completed promptly so that SpaceX can meet all requirements, potentially paving the way for a Starship launch as early as the last week of November. 
At the Starbase launch site, teams continue preparing the launch tower for the Super Heavy Booster Catch attempt during Flight 5. Over the past couple of months, teams added new cushioning pads to the landing rails of the tower arms to dampen the impact forces, strengthened the vertical members of the arms with doubler plates, replaced hydraulic actuators, and made additional structural reinforcements at several key locations. The most recent updates include the reinstallation of the close limit bumpers that were removed two weeks ago. These bumpers are essential safety features that prevent the arms from overclosing and potentially making unintended contact with the rocket during lifting and catching operations. Before reinstallation, extensive reinforcement was added to the bumper areas to enhance their strength. The top of the tower is also undergoing reinforcements. Teams are adding larger gusset plates at critical connection points and welding extension plates onto existing gussets to stiffen the top of the tower in order to prevent failure during the booster catch attempt. Along with upgrades, SpaceX has conducted multiple catch practice and simulation tests in the past weeks and months. The test tank B14.1 that was used for the catch practice tests is currently being prepared at the Sanchez site for another round of testing. The recent addition of the crane lifting lugs to the tank indicates that SpaceX is planning a controlled drop test. The test most likely will involve a crane lowering the B14.1 test tank in between the arms at a speed that replicates the descent of a landing booster. This setup will allow the arms to practice catching the tank similarly to how they would catch a returning booster. We will need to wait a few more days for further details on the specifics of this drop test. The ongoing upgrades and planned catch practice tests are expected to be completed before November. The construction of the second launch pad is advancing rapidly alongside preparations for Flight 5. Currently, crews are installing the elevator system and connecting the plumbing and electrical wiring, essential for the tower's functionality. Also, concrete is being poured into the tower columns to enhance their strength. On the ground, teams are nearing completion of the sheet pile installation for the flame trench area. Excavation will begin in the coming weeks, allowing the construction of the trench's floor and walls. Recent developments suggest that SpaceX may be building a mobile orbital launch mount for Pad B. Aerial images from RGV aerial photography reveal pedestals at the Sanchez site, likely for assembling this mobile mount. This concept art by Chrome Kiwi provides a preview of the potential design, although the final structure may vary. Similar to the new static fire test stand at the Masseys, the new mobile launch mount carrying the full-stack launch vehicle would be positioned over the flame trench during launches. Unlike the fixed launch mount at Pad A, a mobile version offers flexibility by enabling SpaceX to quickly adjust the setup for various missions and tests. Also, a mobile launch mount can be easily removed and replaced, allowing for rapid turnaround and minimizing downtime between launches. With a mobile mount, maintenance can be performed in designated areas away from the launch pad, simplifying repairs and component replacements. Additionally, the design of the mobile mount could include modular elements that facilitate easy access to critical components, further improving maintenance efficiency. Meanwhile, the parts for the Tower 2 ship Quick Disconnect Arms have started to arrive at Starbase. Once all components are on site, they will be assembled at the Sanchez site. Both the tower arms and carriage are already at Sanchez, waiting to be installed into the tower. At the build site, teams continue the assembly of Starship 33, the first Starship Block 2 prototype. With the tank sections already assembled, the focus has shifted to installing the aft flaps and finalizing plumbing and wiring works. The ship will soon be ready for cryo-proof testing. Please check out my previous video to learn about the new and improved Starship Block 2 vehicles in detail. Links are in the description. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. The Federal Aviation Administration has proposed a civil penalty of $633,009 against SpaceX for alleged safety violations related to two Falcon rocket launches that took place in 2023. The first incident occurred in June 2023, when SpaceX launched an Indonesian communication satellite from Cape Canaveral aboard a Falcon 9 rocket. During this launch, SpaceX used a new control room at Hangar X without obtaining prior approval from the FAA. Additionally, the company skipped the mandatory T-2 hour readiness poll, a critical safety check required before launch. The second violation took place in July 2023, during the launch of an Echo Star communication satellite from Kennedy Space Center aboard a Falcon Heavy rocket. During this launch, SpaceX operated a newly constructed rocket propellant farm without receiving the necessary authorization from the FAA. The proposed penalties include $350,000 for the June incident and $283,009 for the July incident. SpaceX has 30 days to respond to the FAA after receiving the agency's enforcement letters. This isn't the first time the FAA has fined SpaceX. 
In February 2023, the agency proposed a $175,000 penalty for a Falcon 9 Starlink mission, citing SpaceX's failure to submit the required launch collision data at least seven days prior to the launch. These proposed penalties add to the ongoing tensions between SpaceX and the FAA, as the company has been vocal about the lengthy regulatory processes required to obtain launch licenses. A closer look at the FAA's statements suggests that the main issue stems from SpaceX's desire to implement rapid upgrades and changes, which the FAA struggles to approve promptly. In response to the proposed fines, Elon Musk posted on X that SpaceX intends to file a lawsuit against the FAA, claiming regulatory overreach. Musk claims that the legal proceedings will reveal improper and politically motivated actions by the agency. Musk has also criticized the FAA's space division, accusing it of unfairly targeting SpaceX with penalties over nonsense that allegedly does not impact safety, while supposedly granting Boeing more leniency. Musk concluded by emphasizing that humanity will forever be confined to Earth unless there is radical reform at the FAA. Meanwhile, the FAA has stated that safety drives everything at the agency, including licensing procedures, and failure of a company to comply with the safety requirements will result in consequences. We will have to wait for further developments on this matter, which will be covered in future videos. In a significant milestone for China's commercial space industry, Beijing-based rocket company Land Space successfully conducted a 10-kilometer hop test of its reusable Juke 3 rocket. The vertical takeoff and landing test took place on September 11 at the Jiaquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert. The test vehicle, measuring 18.3 meters in length and 3.35 meters in diameter, utilized the same high-strength stainless steel airframe structure as the final Juke 3 rocket. Powered by a single TQ-12 methane engine with a thrust of 745 kilonewtons, the test rocket successfully landed within the designated landing pad, located approximately 3.2 kilometers from the launch site, about 200 seconds after takeoff. The test flight successfully demonstrated critical maneuvers, such as engine shutdown after reaching an altitude of 10 kilometers, followed by around 40 seconds of gliding descent, in-flight engine restart for landing burn, and a precise soft landing 1.7 meters away from the center of the landing pad. Landspace, founded in 2015, initially developed a solid-fueled Juke-1 rocket, which failed to reach orbit on its sole flight in 2018. The company then shifted its focus to the liquid methane and liquid oxygen-powered Juke-2, which successfully reached orbit twice in 2023, making it the first methane launch vehicle to achieve this milestone. With these foundational successes and failures behind them, Land Space is now advancing towards the Zuc 3 rocket, which represents a significant leap in their capabilities. The Zuc 3 is designed as a two-stage reusable launch vehicle made entirely of stainless steel and uses liquid methane and liquid oxygen as propellants. Standing at 76.6 meters tall with a 4.5 meter diameter, it has an estimated liftoff weight of about 660 tons. The first stage of this rocket is powered by nine TQ-12B engines, generating a combined thrust of 9,000 kilonewtons, enabling it to carry payloads of up to 21 metric tons into low Earth orbit when fully expendable. The second stage is equipped with a TQ-15B engine, delivering a vacuum thrust of 1,183 kilonewtons. Notably, Juke 3's first stage is designed for reusability, featuring four grid fins and deployable landing legs, allowing it to be reused for up to 20 launches. Landspace is preparing for the maiden flight of Juke 3 as early as 2025, and the company is focused on achieving full reusability by 2026. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.